Today we're going to be exploring the Bastogne in eastern Belgium area where a lot of the activity from the Battle of the Bulge in World War II happened. To be able to see these foxholes almost 80 years old and they're still here, it's pretty crazy. Just joining us, we spent the last week in France exploring World War II sites with Kelly's dad. Yesterday we flew into Dusseldorf, picked up a rental car, and drove up near Arnhem, Netherlands. We stayed at this really awesome little Airbnb last night. Our plan for the next few days is to drive through the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg visiting a lot of World War II sites. We are going to pack up here and then head into Arnhem. So this is my first time in the Netherlands. We're in a random little Dutch town called Honderloo, north of the German border and kind of east of Amsterdam, about an hour. This area is significant to World War II between D-Day and the Battle of the Bulge. So we're gonna go hit a couple of the uh, spots and monuments. But before that, we need to get some food and I noticed there is a pancake house very close by. So we got four Dutch pancakes, and they're basically Dutch versions of crepes. They're huge, but, oh no, fly, get away! But they're very thin, so I think it's not a lot of food or something. Calories don't count when you're on vacation, right? Kevin got one with mushroom, egg, and bacon. I got one called the Matterhorn, which has honey, goat cheese, pine nuts, and bacon. And then we got a sweet one, because I couldn't not get one that's got pears, powdered sugar, and vanilla ice cream. And I am so excited right now. Now we're heading towards the town of Arnhem. We'll be there in about 15 minutes. All right, so we are in the town of Arnhem in the Netherlands. And the reason this town is significant to World War II is because the Arnhem Bridge over the Rhine River was the main objective of Operation Market Garden in September of 1944. Now, as a reminder, this may seem like a really random amount of places we're going to, definitely not your tourist hotspots, but the whole reason for this trip is because a lot of these places were on my dad's bucket list, and while we have the means and I have my airline job, it seemed like a fantastic time to come, especially since we were here for his birthday about a week ago and you might as well do these things while you're able to because you never know what's gonna happen. Probably a lot of these places Kevin and I wouldn't have seen on our own aside from maybe Normandy, but that's actually pretty cool because I don't think I ever would have come to Arnhem in the Netherlands or some of these random places we've seen in France. And let me tell you, I'm really happy that we've come to these places so far. The Netherlands are amazing. Should we put some miles under our belt? I think so. Let's do it. Only one kilometer from Belgium. We just crossed the border into Belgium. And let me tell you, European border crossings are pretty dang easy. I don't think we needed it, but just in case, since we were going to a bunch of different countries, Kevin and I both got international driver's licenses, which are pretty easy to get. We got them through AAA. They were 20 bucks a piece. You just have to bring your regular American license. We've been renting cars through agencies that allow your spouse to drive for free. So that has really helped us save a little bit of money just because we don't have to pay the extra driver fee. So pro tip, if you're traveling with your spouse, try to book a car through one of those rental agencies. Some of the agencies are Avis, Budget, Alamo, Enterprise, but check on it before you book. That'll help you save a little bit of money when traveling. We've made it to our room in Bastogne, Belgium. 
This is Hotel Leo. We're staying right over the city square, really central to everything. And I'm happy because there's more than one bed, which finding a room for three people that doesn't have a sofa bed has been actually really hard in Europe so far. We're gonna grab some food for the room and tomorrow we have a lot of cool things to see in Bastogne. So we'll see you tomorrow for a continuation of our World War II tour. Good morning, happy travelers. Welcome back to Bastogne, Belgium. Today we're going to be exploring the Bastogne in Eastern Belgium area, where a lot of the activity from the Battle of the Bulge in World War II happened. There are some great museums in this area and also some fox holes a little bit north of the town that we want to go see. We are all packed up and it's time to go. Good morning. Ready to go see some fox holes? We're going to see some fox holes, a museum. Let's go. I'm not very good on camera. Neither is Kevin, it's all right. We've come to see the Easy Company foxholes just outside of the little hamlet of Foy, but it looks like everything is fenced off. They're kind of building this up as a tourist attraction and it looks very new, which is really unfortunate because I think my dad was really looking forward to seeing this. But we bought him this book before this trip, Essential World War II Sites. Um, and there looks to be another place where there are some foxholes. During the Battle of the Bulge, Bastogne was a really important crossroads that the Americans held. In these forests, this was actually the front line between the American and the German soldiers. If you've ever seen Band of Brothers, they did a whole episode on the winter battle in these woods, where the 101st Airborne Division was holding the enemy line and dug out these foxholes in the middle of winter. Today, you can still see some of these foxholes. That's not what you want to hear when you're in these woods. So my grandfather actually served in the army in 1944 and 1945. And as far as we know, he was in the Battle of the Bulge. He passed away 13 years ago and he didn't really talk about his time in World War II at all. And I didn't know much about his service and neither does my dad really, which is kind of unfortunate, but we can sort of piece together a few things and just hope that we're sort of following in his footsteps here. And I know he saw some pretty scary things. He did say that a couple times. It's pretty crazy walking around the forest to be able to see these foxholes almost 80 years old and they're still here. We just watched that episode of Band of Brothers last night too, just knowing that we were gonna come here. And I can't imagine what it would have been like fighting here. Up right along the road here, there's a whole line of all of these foxholes and there's a big field here with some older growth trees beyond it. And I'm wondering if this was actually the front line right here. So just down the road from the foxholes is the Easy Company Memorial. And this is not the first Easy Company Memorial we've seen on this trip. They made the whole Band of Brothers miniseries from them because they saw a lot of action in the war. So we are loosely kind of following where they went. It's been really touching to see throughout this entire trip and in multiple countries, just the amount of reverence towards the World War II soldiers still almost 80 years later, the amount of memorials and plaques and dedications and museums in all of these places. I wasn't expecting that at all. So that's been really, really great to see. Now we're visiting the 101st Airborne Museum, which is right in Bastogne. There's also another more general Bastogne War Museum in town, which is supposed to be really good but we let my dad choose and he chose the 101st Airborne.
that was really intense. That was not a place if you have uh, sensitivity to light and flashing or if you have PTSD. We obviously weren't in any danger, but man, that was... It was pretty intense. Yeah. Bombing simulation in a town that was bombed. All right, we just got some lunch and we're finishing up our time in Bastogne. But before we go, I have to go to a chocolate shop and get some Belgian chocolates. That is super important. definitely going to melt if we don't eat them. We're going to eat them all right now. Mm -hmm. Wow, they're really good though. We came just outside of town to the Bastogne War Museum, mainly just because Kelly's dad wanted to get a t-shirt and we couldn't find a good gift shop, so we knew that this place would definitely have a good gift shop. This is a really large comprehensive museum and we spent so much time at the other one that we decided not to come to this one, but if you want a really great overview of uh, the Bastogne War experience, this is, I've heard, a really good museum. 16 euros a person. But that's going to be it for this video, but be sure to subscribe because you will not want to miss our next video. We're staying in a really cool Airbnb, which my dad does not know about yet. It's gonna be a surprise for him. Thanks so much for watching everyone. This is Kelly and Kevin from The Awkward Tourists. Peace out. We've just pulled up to the bunker Airbnb and unlocked the gate. Kelly's dad still has not seen it and still has no idea. Should I pull it up closer? Is this a bunker? Is it really? Our own little bunker. How about that? Home sweet home. For the last week, Kelly and I have spent... Kelly and I have spent the last week... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> so... Mm. <laughs> I'm dark. You can just wait till they get out. No! Oh. Um, okay. What do I want to say? <sighs> Skirt through Belgium a bit and we will also hit We have a Volkswagen minivan. <laughs> Wunderbar. No, wrong country. Wunderbar. The beeping suggests otherwise. Mm. Big old smudge on the lens. So we'll see you tomorrow for more World War II. So you see, so. <laughs>